Assalamu alaikum students this is Farwa Batool your O level computer science instructor and welcome to another video so in the previous video we have seen the second type of validation check and in this video we will be talking about the third type that is the type check okay so in this type of validation check we basically see that the given that our input data that will be entered by the user must follow or must be of a given data type let me explain you this you know when we talk about programming then there are different kind of data types for the input data your data can be an integer value which means that it must be a whole number like 12 52 100 and so on you your data can be a float value float is another data type which means it must be a decimal number like 12.5 7.2 and so on and it is also another data type is a string in which we can write any character a b c 1 2 3 any symbol so this is an a string data type so the good thing about this validation check is that it checks that the data that you input as a user must be following a given data type let me tell you this thing with an example let's take an example here let's suppose in a given computer system you have to enter the field of phone number you have to fill this so we know that a phone number must be an integer value it cannot be a decimal like 12.5 no it must be like this 03117589269 like this so it must be a whole number so in this case we have to check that the input data entered by the user must be a whole number now let me quickly tell you that how we can apply this type check on the given data field here i have shared the code of your book let's see this example the first line here says that a user sees a message how many brothers do you have it means that the user has to enter number of brothers that must be a whole number or in other words it must be an integer value because we know that it cannot be 2.5 7.5 it must be like we have two brothers we have three brothers or so on so it only it should only be a whole number now let's quickly see that what are the diff, what are the line of code in order to check for this input data look here it's a repeat until loop that will continue until we will get a valid data or an integer value this until loop will only be terminate when the number of brothers must be a whole number and how we will be checking that this is a whole number it will be checked by using this division method let me tell you this division method in detail it's an integer division and it takes two values as parameter the first one is the numerator and the other one is the denominator and in this case the denominator is 1 it means we are dividing the input data number of brothers by 1 and we know that every number that is divided by 1 is the same number the quotient is the same number so if it is a float value let's suppose the user has entered 10.5 by mistake so when it will be divided by 1 now the good thing about this division method is that it is going to return only the integer part of your input data that is 10 it will not return the decimal part so when the user will enter an integer value let's suppose 
it will return you 20, the same number. But when the user enters by mistake a float or a decimal number, then it will only return the integer part of that number. Let's suppose 2. So this is how we are going to check. Let's suppose I'm again on the same condition. Let me explain you this. Let's suppose the user has entered 2.5. So, the until condition will see that 2.5 is equal to, we know that division 2.5 comma 1 is going to return only the integer part that is 2. So, 2.5 we know that it is not equals to 2. So, this condition becomes false. It means the user has entered invalid data. It is not a whole number. Now, when the until condition is not satisfied or it is false, the user has to enter data again. Now, let's quickly see that in two iterations. Look at here into the code. Let's suppose the user for the first iteration, he has entered a value 2.5. So, when we will go inside the repeat until loop, this 2.5 will be stored in the variable number of brothers. Then there is a conditional statement. It will check that number of brothers, that is 2.5, if not equals to this. Now again, it's a division method that is taking in its parameters 2.5 that is number of brothers and 1. So it will be dividing 2.5 by 1 and will return only the whole number or the integer part of the input data that is 2. So 2.5 is not equal to 2 which is true. So when this condition, the if condition becomes true, the user will see this message. The output message will be, this must be a whole number, which is specified the user that please do not enter any decimal number. Why? Because number of brothers cannot be a decimal value. So, when the user will see this message, in the next time, he will definitely enter a whole number. Look at this. Please re-enter. The user has to re-enter the value. Then for the first time when it will see the until condition, so this is 2.5 and this is 2. 2.5 is not equals to 2. So the until condition is false here and we know that we cannot go out of the loop until the until condition is satisfied or becomes true. So we will again going to the loop. We will go to the second iteration and let's suppose now in the second iteration, user has entered 2, which is a valid data. So again, it will go inside your repeat until loop. 2 is stored in number of brothers. 2, if not equals to now, the method of divide will return 2 divided by 1 will return 2 because 2 is the integer value. So, when 2 is not equals to 2, this becomes false because we know that 2 is equals to 2. So, when this condition becomes false, we will not print this message because we know that the user has entered an integer value. So, we will quickly move towards the until condition and we will check for this. Number of brothers is 2 equals to division 2 comma 1. Again, you will receive 2 uh, as a result of this method. So, 2 equals to 2. Here, the until condition is true. So, we know that we can only go out of the loop when the until condition is true. So, in this way, we went outside. So, this is how we check that either user has entered the correct value or not which is the integer value in this case. This is all about type check. Thank you so much for watching this video. In the next video, we will be talking about the fourth type, that is the presence check. 
थैंक यू सो मच स्टेट यू डिस्टे कनेक्टेड एंड डो नॉट फॉरगेट टू सब्सक्राइब